Welcome back, my friends, to TNO. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, and look at that. We have 541 factories. But right now, with Bobby Kennedy, we are able to choose our SCOTUS nominee at the very moment. The Supreme Court is moderately conservative. Many in both the media and Congress are urging us to select a nominee who provides some ideological balance. The Supreme Court is ostensibly supposed to be nonpartisan, kept away from day-to-day -day politics. On the other hand, very few things in America are nonpartisan when you get right down to it. Picking a nominee who fits with our ideological outlook could ensure some real political victories down the line, yet on the other hand, it could draw the ire of some of those who aren't staunch members of our voting base. So, which option should we go with? A liberal nominee or a conservative one? Well, because we're still playing as Bobby Kennedy, and there's probably still a chance that we could go bye-bye. Let's go with a conservative option. You never know who's listening, who's doing what, thinking about who knows what. But right now, we're in the middle of Iran, having a casual war with them, having a good time. Trying to, well, do whatever we must to secure victory for the Iranians. Oh, I, oh, they caught me. They caught me. My guys went back. They wanted to get in here. I wanted to encircle these guys, but we'll hold for now. And we can probably hold fairly well. Can we go ahead and just start mopping up a whole lot of this? Um, we can move faster than these guys, obviously. Oh, or maybe not. Oh, they got back to Tehran. That sucks. If I go there, can I defend better? Yes, we can. The Roses International. President Kennedy hasn't only been focusing on the welfare of his own nation's people and the fight against international fascism, it's important to strengthen your allies as well. To that end, his administration has pushed to create the Roses International, an international program to help fund anti-poverty efforts across the Organization of Free Nations. Funds and knowledge from America's own fight against poverty are to be made to Canada, Australia, and New Zealand to help the lowest of those in their societies rise up with improved welfare, health, education, and more. Efforts are to be made especially with the native peoples of their lands, the First Nations in Canada, the Aborigines in Australia, and Maori in New Zealand, who have suffered from systematic racism much like African Americans and Indians in the United States. Overall, the program has been well received, if with a bit of grumbling by the Prime Ministers and MPs of our allies that they could have handled it. Thank you very much. But we can be proud of the fact that we are willing to help not just support our nation, but the poor around the world. Our expenses rise, god dang it, and the Organization of Free Nations grows a little bit more unified. Well, I don't really probably care about that too much, since it's already very high, so we can't probably do that any better. But their poverty rate will improve a little bit more, so basically we helped ourselves, or helped their allies, for not too much gain. Can we actually win there? Cool. Judicial shakeup. And these uncertain times for America. Radical change is needed. We can no longer justify existing in a state of business as usual, and so our administration has made the controversial decision to grant their Supreme Court nominations to certain individuals who are more likely to see things from our viewpoint. Reaction to our move has been mixed. More diehard supporters have praised our commitment to fulfilling our promises, but responses from most other Americans have been that of suspicion at best, outrage at worst. With many newspapers sharply criticizing our erosion of the separation of powers, our approval ratings have dropped sharply among the many moderate voters. Their trust will be very difficult to win back if at all possible. Change is necessary no matter the price. Hold on, hold, hold the phone! We did not select a court justice, necessarily, who viewed or who ideologically agrees with us. We actually chose someone who really doesn't. What? What? Because we are one of the more progressive wings of that is available to the American people. Uh, one of the parties like that. So, us choosing a conservative nominee or justice doesn't necessarily fit in with everything that we do or say so and we just won that part of the iranian civil war all you had to do was just come down through here and semnon but whatever i you know what i like about this mod or at least you know what we can see from here i can actually see so many different cities from different nations i have no idea what iran is like except for tehran and the straits of hormuz down here that's all i know and they border india no pakistan the raj but now pakistan all right, now time to take out some uh, mountain peoples. I mean, it probably involves some Kurds too, I, I bet. So, hey, look, they immediately attack us. I mean, what can I say? I love it when Bobby gets involved in other people's affairs. Oh my goodness, they are attacking like crazies. I love it. Yeah, let them come in. Let them come in. Yeah. Let them come take the desert sand. Is this desert sand? It's it's well, it's desert. So, so it's desert sand. God dang it, guys. I just want to I just want to circle and kill them off, that's all. If you guys could do that too, just get down here if you can, that'd be great. Oh, yes. Kick them out, kick them out. Wow, look at that. We actually have army XP. Whoa! Oh, man. It would be so cool to get some more. Hold, you don't need to move. Oh, we're not going to get enough, though, for us to really do what we want. Like, get another division on here. Or battalion, I should really say. It's not a division, it's a battalion. 
Oh, yeah. Get it higher, 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 higher. Please get it higher. Why don't you attack? Oh, I love defeating enemies that use light militia divisions. It's so nice. You know what? We're going to grind. I want to get up to 5 army XP. It's going to struggle. We're going to struggle greatly here, but that's okay. You can up out as well. Oh. Come on. There you go. Do you have any upgrades? Lavelle is doing a good job. He's learning how to be an organizer, which is kind of nice. And a mountaineer. Level 5 attack. Not bad, my friends. Keep attacking. See what happens. <clears throat> 2v4. Hopefully we can win. We we'll probably won't get it to 5 army XP, which really sucks. Really sad things here, man. I swear. But that's okay. Help him out. Because you can. Ah, 1970s nuclear carrier reactor. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Hope you guys are having a great day. It's time to get a little nuky with our carriers here. So, level 3. Hangar space. They gotta be large. Just double check that they're large. Armor. I don't mind getting deck armor just because it helps out. Just maybe a little bit large. Ah, large and in charge. Yes, please. Anti-air is nice. <clears throat> but anti-air missiles. Let's see. Service missile. 10%, 12%. This gives you more speed. It actually lowers your anti-air by 0.2 in exchange for slightly more speed. Uh, you know what? We could get more speed, but... Um, let's take a look at other things first. Raider 3 is not bad. Carrier engine 3s. 4s would not be bad, but nuclear engine 2. You're, actually, the fuel usage is not that much less. That's surprisingly quite a bit less, actually. It's not, it's, or the difference is not as much as I would like it to be. So, no, we're not going to do that. That's disappointing. And dual purpose is always good. Let's see, one thing I wanted to see first. Nothing. I can't think of what I wanted to see. Cool, you're out. Thank you. Awesome, nuclear carriers. I mean, I wish the cost was better. I really do. Advanced medium batteries... Why not? Why not? Campaign for civil rights? No, we good for now. We good. Securing our interests. Great. Guess for the king. We're going to do it in for the kill. Probably immediately because they are getting attacked by the Italians right now. Black Gold Rush. Operation Sandstorm. Ooh, can we send them volunteers right now? Because, oh god, we might not be able to save them. Ooh, this is going to be a black stain on our eyes, probably. We have no reason to involve ourselves in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's proxy war. Operation Sandstorm. Guess for the king. In for the kill. Pick your targets. <clears throat> Guess for the king. King Faisal holds sway over the nation-state's embryo. He may have government, culture, recognition, and rule of law, but without the guns to back its monopoly and violence, his dynasty might as well be one more tribe among the Arabian Peninsula's lawless Bayoudins. More specifically, Bay Bedouins, vulnerable to the nationalistic overtures of a united Arab identity. Here, America can leverage its economic largesse, but trust the young nation's precarious position. A shipment of guns, both outdated and state-of-the-art, will ensure that the king of the nation's or the state's long lastingness in the face of a subcontinent's worth of foes. I'm sorry, Saudi Arabia, but we chose the Democratic Republic of Iran to help us out to fight the eels of fascism. Smoke on the wind. Bruce Langan sat resting his head on his palm, reading and rereading the communique from Washington. He'd been ensconced in the American embassy for days, drafting policy plans in the searing heat, seeing fans going full bore. They resolved so fast he was half afraid they'd spin off their axes and decapitate him. Frankly, now he'd received his orders, he was almost starting to hope for it. <clears throat> With a sigh, he called in Agent Hunt, one of the latest concrete cowboys Langley had sent him. Like most agency men in the field, Hunt was a red-blooded American with a taste for beer, football, and shooting foreigners. Bruce had an almost instantaneous dislike for the man, but the two were going to be forced to work together. They might as well be try and be civil. After all, personality conflict aside, they were striving for the same goal. Bruce lit a cigarette and offered one to Hunt. He tossed a communique over to Hunt's side of the desk. The presence decided to put boots on the ground, he said, uh, laconically, in a carefully neutral tone of voice. He had become paranoid lately that his office might be bugged, either by the Saudis or the agency, and he did not want to give them any indication that he was doubting the efficacy of the slowly escalating policy of interventionism in the Middle East. <clears throat> Hunt glanced over the document, then flickered his eyes at Bruce's. We better get ready then, is what you're saying, he said, a barely perceptible grin on his face. Bruce nodded. Get everyone organized. The first of them are going to be here pretty god darn soon, and now we're nowhere near ready to receive them. And for God's sakes, get Frank to get the Saudis off my gosh dang back. Hunt stood and flashed Bruce a pearly white smile as he made for the door. Hot god dang. It's going to be just like another South Africa. The overture begins. It's not going to be another South Africa here, because these guys are dying fast. We don't even have a, they don't even have a port anymore. 
Over here, the Italians are coming in just like, woo! I mean, we're doing, the, we're trying to go as fast as we can in Iran. Well, I guess that's a lie. I can go straight for Tabriz, actually. There you go. Get up out there, help defend. There you go. No, the dreams of getting at least five army XP has been shattered. We have won! No! <laughs> that's the weirdest thing to say. We have won, but we lost. But not really. Oh! German bombing runs, huh? <clears throat> Guaranteeing the independence of Algeria. The Algerian mandate. Actually, can we, can we send stuff to Yemen? No. I'm trying to get involved, guys. I'm, I swear. The Iran war? We don't need to do that. Oh, there goes... Oh, no. Well, we can't help the Saudis. No! Actually, can... Italy's not formed their own nation state yet. That's fine. Oh, there's the United Arab States down here. Huh. You know, I think I said in the last video, or the last episode, that I wanted to not decrease military spending anymore since we were attacking, but we won the war twice. Quite literally. Keep slashing it. I'm going to get down to national debt to be zero. And now Italy has acquired nuclear weaponry. And so the clock moves closer to midnight. Hmm. Well, that sucks. So, we don't need to ease southern fears, fears now, since I did technically, like, uh, nominate another c conservative to the Supreme Court, so. Uh, I'm not sure what these guys are doing, because they're not fighting anyone. They didn't try to kill anybody. And Mr. Sanjabi is, well, I'm not sure what he's doing. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm not sure what they're doing now. <clears throat> so, I guess we'll see what happens. Let's see, support equipment, 1970s. Transport helicopters. Why not? God, I wish we could throw stuff on there, but now we're losing a daily army XP. Oh. I want to help them out. I really do, but Operation Sandstorm? I mean, we could try it. At the very least, happy 1972, by the way, but we could try it. As of late, the Joint Chiefs of Staff busied themselves with preparing America's most comprehensive ex expeditionary force since Indonesia. Drawing from the lessons learned in the past decade's two largest wars, the country's finest generals and admirals drew minute... <clears throat> Extensive plans for a lightning war involving all four branches of the U.S. Armed Forces. They describe the immense firepower America's tanks, guns, ships, planes combined will demonstrate as a shock and awe campaign spanning the Middle East, routinely inspected for any flaws that may lead to another quagmire. I'll told the Pentagon ensured America that Sandstorm will promise just that a storm. Woe betide the fools who bar its path. I mean, we just saw it in Iran. We literally won there. Twice! Twice, man! <clears throat> I mean, we're... To a degree, we're suffering from success, almost. Oh, this is so sad. No. No. People stated they're even Gulf. Oh, God. A th a who? Those, that looks like an Italian flag, but you have a non-aggression factor with them? The colonial government. Oil cult. Increased fleet funding. Inspired workers. Oil crisis. Oh, man. So, I didn't realize the Dofar Rebellion was allied to the Syrian Republic. That's kind of interesting. <clears throat> and my voice is going for some reason right now. I don't know why it always happens when I play TNO. My voice always just goes bye-bye. No! No! Oh, no, 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 no. Balbo, why? Why have you done this, Balbo? So, what's the point of doing Operation Sandstorm now? Advanced transport helicopters are really nice. That's out of date, too, but whatever. <clears throat> All right. But man. Why? Yeah, we must well throw one of these on there because we can. Why not? Doesn't really matter. We're just going to research as much as, as much as we possibly can. But God, that's so disappointing. Uh, we, uh, is, is it, this might be bugged, maybe? To the, oh, boy. If you want to read about this, go right ahead. We're trying to gonna win, hopefully, the presidential election. And we're going to actually campaign for R&D. Just because I don't want I don't want them to win, so we're not gonna we're not gonna campaign. There's a there's a good mixture of support now, especially in the upper south. There's a lot of R and Ds. Everywhere else, though, we just gotta make sure we pass good enough legislation. The Iran, the war, okay. So I'm not gonna I don't I want to say I'm gonna mess with stuff to make sure that this is okay and stuff. Actually, the upcoming race it's 72. We only we were elected at 64, right? And 68. Oh no, is our time with Robert Kennedy almost over? Oh no, hope not. Is there a term limits? I hope not. Black gold. At this point, I'm not going to do this 
anymore just because there's really no point to. I tried to do stuff, but I think it's time we move on and test the waters. New untried reforms have the inherent risk of falling and failing and becoming sinkholes for taxpayer dollars. Policy planners may make predictions based on theory and advise accordingly, but a law's performance can't be measured only after it's implemented, not, up, not before. Without caution to restrain the hastiness of politicians who pine for reforms, America will have seen a hundred good laws pass in a hundred days, and a hundred failures that burden its treasury for little gain. For his part, the president is keen to remind the MPP congressmen and the constituents that lasting reform will come in due time. At the same time, he's authorized the cabinet to implement a backlog of policies at a small scale as test programs of sorts. With them, we can acquire much-needed data on how well our reforms achieve their objections, or objectives, I mean, without having expanded too much money and abject failures. Awesome. Planning, education, reform. Hopefully no one takes us out, though. That'd be very bad. Hey, look at that. Yaki. Wallace. The silent majority speaks. Oh boy. We could hardly have expected a deployment of ground combat troops to Saudi Arabia to remain covert for long. And since it's gone public, we've become inundated with opposition to our escalation of the American presence in the Middle East. We didn't land anyone there, except one guy, maybe one or two. Students and South African veterans have staged anti-war demonstrations in several universities and parks within across America. And they made public their plans to march on Washington to call for the halt and deployment. Well... No one's going over there now, man. I swear to God. Senators from both sides of the party divide are being buried in angry letters from constituents, many of them who've had family died in Africa and consequently are urgently calling in Congress for a freeze in troop deployments or for more radical senators a total withdrawal. We'd lose serious face in the international community if we just pulled out. We can't abandon the Saudi slimy dudes, though they may be, we, without jeopardizing our oil supply. All we can do is hope tensions don't keep escalating we get stuck in a war we can't win. God dang it, why does being such an oil-rich region have to be so unstable? The last thing we need is to get caught in another quagmire. What do you mean? We sent literally two guys that were... What? It's like we're destined to fail or something. I don't know. I don't like that. I really don't like that. Like, we did so well, didn't we? Like, you guys saw me do really well here. I'm not really sure what to say. I really don't know what to say. But, well, what I do know is that the center MPP can grow more popular. And we get some stability, 1%. Uh, international, no. I mean, this stuff is just going to stay here, it seems like, the entire time. Actually... Consolidate more into our wing. It's not bad. This stuff, I don't know why it's still here. Getting England on the side, not sure why that's still here. Fighting back market, I'm not sure why. That's still here, upcoming race. The polls don't, The polls lie sometimes, the political landscape. We're ready to do whatever we need to. So, you know what? We could ease southern fears. A less liberal, grows more divided, more support from unions and his radical base. Further divided, means more liberal. Campaign where we haven't. I'm going to try this one. We get 1% more stability. And we lose a lot of political power. But, we grow more popular. We'll try it. Why not? We only have 936 million in liquid reserves, so... Whatever. We'll try it. Why not? Right? Hey, the United Arab Republic is back. Okay, so they united. The, uh, the Dofa Rebellion in Oman, and... These guys... Disunited armies, chaotic politics... You kind of figured that would happen, wouldn't you? When you unite, even though you're so far away from each other... So, like I was trying to say earlier, regarding Iran, I wanted to say that I'm going to just give this territory to them so they can unite in, into one Iran, but I don't want to get involved. There might be decisions that the, each country can take, or at least the Democratic Republic of Iran can take, so that they can do well. The Iberian delegation visits Washington. Another friendly Iberian delegation has arrived in busy Washington. As per schedule, it's a diplomatic mission the same as the OA is to prove relations and therefore ties between our now Democratic Iberia and the OFM. The currently still hidden motive of these visits and the increasing cordial correspondence between the two despots despotic but German-opposed federal union and us was really clearly visible. The two combined peoples were likely wanting to draw closer to our alliance itself and from there join as an equal member, possibly very lucrative enterprise considering the strength of Europe still shrouded in darkness in our protective Far East. It, however, would not come without danger as the Germans have proven themselves in recent decades not to be very sensible folk, especially in reacting to foreign-made stimuli. Our decision, therefore, is how to continue dealing with the Iberians should we draw nearer quicker or only better relations slowly, betting on the Iberians not abandoning their current foreign policy towards us. Currently, this decision is represented by how the President will respond to the delegation. Will he send a letter thanking the Iberians for the efforts, or will he send an OFN delegation to Madrid and Lisbon to deepen ties? A fantastic meeting? We should visit them. Send them a cordial letter? Oh, we should, we should visit. We should totally go visit. And for some reason, I keep... I, I always forget that Burgundy is still here and they're not... Oh. Himmlerite. Oh, Himmlerite. The Three Realms. I still need to play as Burgundy someday. Purge of the Rot. The Shadow State. Industri Berserk Rodomo. Fuel rationing, of course. Das Bagendische Rostafant. Rostafant. 
And let's see what they got. Das Landwirtschaftsamt. The bunkers. <laughs> Testing the waters. Legion loyalty. Other stuff. And other stuff. Cool. After this one. Yeah, I'm not going to do that anymore. Let's see. Community action, no child left behind. We'll try to pass a bill through Congress. Ooh, community action. Oh, we can try this one. America's future fortunes are intertwined with that of its children. Today, their success is our country's success, their failings are our country's failings. The strength and longevity of American society and American values rely on its pillars, and well-fed, well-taught, and well-adjusted children will surely become pillars of mighty stone. Our children's future foretells America's future, therefore. It is the government's responsibility to create an environment in which they can all blossom to their fullest potential. As education reform is an integral component of the NPP's agenda, plans are being drawn for nationwide programs aimed at increasing both the children enrolled in our schools and the quality of education they receive. America should not leave its children behind. The President Kennedy pledges to make that boast a reality. Cool. Cures for a fat purse. Once again, Democrats, strongman Barry Goldwater is taking to the Senate floor to speak against our policies. This time, he rallied against what termed what he termed reckless spending by the president on welfare and education programs. After advocating for a massive reduction in spending on government programs, Goldwater ended his tirade by quoting former President James Madison. Charity is no part of the legislative duty of the government. To thunderous applause from the Democratic cronies and plenty of our own supposed party brothers in the NPP. He is, as usual, completely wrong, but has managed to trick plenty of our more easily led citizens into agreeing with him and demanding reduced government spending, often in areas they directly benefit from. If Goldwater's had his way, he'd cut welfare programs up like a Thanksgiving turkey, deny millions of Americans the essential aid they require to lift themselves out of their poverty clutches. It seems that he'd prefer government revenue to gather dust in a vault somewhere, but from what good would that be? The purpose of taxation is the funding of programs that benefit the taxpayer, and as a government of the United States, it is our duty to ensure that Americans have the highest quality of life possible. We cannot let vocal and influential reactionaries prevent us from achieving a bright future for every American. This nation cannot be truly great until not a single child goes hungry, an American or America worth fighting for. Let's cut and spend our liquid reserves. Hmm. <laughs> the Federal Student Aid Act. Oh, goodness. So 41 out of our 43 senators support the bill. There's little room for compromise with the Republicans, no room for the Democrats, and no room for the far right. This actually was is, is probably the closest bill I've ever had to spend or try to pass with not that much support. 41 plus 6 plus 6 plus 2. So that's usually 55. That's not a lot of senators voting for us. That's not good. There's a little room for compromise. Yeah, I don't want to isolate anyone else. We got 55. Was it 55 I just said? 43? Yeah, 55 people, so it is what it is. 0.22 a day. Man, if we have a crisis, this is not going to be good. Talk with Republicans? No. Polls are updated. Let's see what's going on. NPP, NPP. Ooh. Some NPP definitely in the Upper South and the Southwest and the Great Lakes. Wait. Illinois, Michigan. Is Ohio next to the Great Lake? I think in Indiana? Is it Wisconsin? Where did Wisconsin go? Montana, the Rockies, NPP, 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 NPP. Yeah, did they... Did they... What happened to Wisconsin? Yeah, Wisconsin's gone. Okay. I guess... Maybe I'm just not seeing it. Maybe, you know, I'm blind. I don't see Wisconsin here, though. Huh. <coughs> Excuse me, I had a sneeze. Oh, my goodness. Less than 20 billion again in national debt. Even though we're not really building anything. It doesn't really matter though. Wow, minus 42%. God dang. Transport helicopter companies twos. No child left behind. Oh no. Uh, single companies though. Beautiful. We'll focus on that after we get... Community action. Successfully implementing laws requires the willful participation of local communities and their leading figures. Their importance to the lasting impact of the president's reforms cannot be understated. In fact, the result of his many programs suborns itself to the extent at which our community enforces them. Those who look favorably to President Kennedy's policies will not hesitate to follow both the letter and extent. Conversely, those who do not will play every trick in the book to keep them from enforcing even the former. Securing their loyalties becomes easier when they voluntarily offer their own support. For this outcome, President Kennedy intends to address inhabitants, whether in person or through broadcast. His opponents raise comparisons to door-to-door -door salesmen, but if it works, why bother then complaining? And the act passes. President Kennedy, surrounded by students and teachers at Strong John Thompson, 
uh, Elementary School in Washington, D.C., just a few blocks from the White House, has signed the Federal Student Aid Act to applause as news cameras and photographers record the event for posterity today. We say that all of America's students deserve the chance to learn and grow to become the well-informed, smart, and intelligent adults of tomorrow that will make America better than ever. The doctors, teachers, artists, inventors, and leaders of tomorrow are in our schools today, and we must do all that we can today to make tomorrow even better. The FSA Act will set up a new baseline standard for primary and secondary schools in America in mathematics, English, history, science, civics, and more. The federal government will provide money to states and school boards that due to financial reasons are unavailable to raise their schools to the new standards in hiring teachers and expanding classrooms to promote quality of education across the nation. Other aspects of the law include funding for newer and safer school buses, penalties for school districts that fail to integrate their schools, and establishing a nonpartisan committee to standardize textbooks across the nation. While education groups and civil rights organizations are really pleased with the FSA and the Ed Quality and Standardization Edicts, many states' rights proponents are angry at the law, which is pretty much stripping the local control over education that has long been one of the most important roles of the states. While most of the articles of the law are only for the school districts that require the funds are, uh, that, and are opt-in, the need for money in many of the poorest states will force them to compromise on their beliefs in order to get the money they need to operate. Nevertheless, FSA will soon make America one of the best educated nations in the world. An apple for every teacher, a chalkboard for every student, academic base continues to slowly, slowly improve. Yet, we didn't get that much support from that. Do people not like that? I guess not. It's kind of sad. Four debuts of Mustang 2! Trends rise and fall as taste shifts with time, and from this, America's muscle cars are no less exempt. Where a decade ago, horsepower and size were prized qualities for the American car owner, now they seem akin to the white elephants of Th Thailand. Delights of view from afar, but pains to afford to maintain. With the oil war and hardships that brought America's taste have finally shifted in full towards fuel economy and cost. The now venerable Mustang would have suffered the same fate as its fellow burdensome beast were it not for the ha haste of its parent company's engineers. Plans were made in Dearborn to accommodate the gas line or gasoline rations and reining economics up to the car's design. Lengths and widths were cut short, gas guzzling V8s replaced with compact I-4s, and friends modified to reduce noise and vibration as its dimensions shrink. Drawing from their failures with the Pinto, Ford set out to effectively downsize their flagship muscle car into form, suiting the American family's increasingly tight purses. The end result is the second generation Mustangs, so the Mustang 2 is released with a plump today. Seemingly satisfied with this compromise between economy and style, men with means have gone out to purchase Ford's new old car and droves. Analysts estimate that Mustang 2 orders will reach more than 400,000 by New Year's. God dang. Hopefully foretelling that Ford's greatest success will continue succeeding for another decade yet. Improve, adapt, and overcome, and I'll be right back, my friends. My apologies about that, but anyways, right now we're just kind of hanging out after we read about that Mustang, and uh, can we slash the budget some more? Oh, yes, we can. Very good. Less than 19 billion. That's pretty nice. Hopefully... Hopefully, we can do some community action. And then, this is still an election year. We need to do the Social Security Act. We could consult with King. I think we'll go with the rights of the worker next. A federal minimum wage, support from unions. After that, lose support from unions. Public pension system. Hmm. We'll probably go with the federal minimum wage so we get some more support from unions and his radical support base. I think that'd probably be for the best. That's probably best to do that. And we could campaign, but... Yeah. Why would we want the RDs to win, right? Why would we want them to win? Polls are updated. Oh, let's go check them out. Oh, let's see. NPP. Oh, a lot of RDs. I've seen a lot, a lot, a lot of RDs. So that's not good. Uh, NPs, NPPs, calling on the community. Cool. Oh, uh, let's see. The war against poverty, the fight for basic human rights and decency, is one that my administration has done to its utmost fight. We push reforms and expansions of the welfare state to cover as many Americans as we can to create a baseline and a safety net to catch those who fall and need our help. However, this is not just the job of the government to facilitate. This is the work of the whole nation. Every one of us needs to pitch in to help the underprivileged and poor and the sick and broken so that everyone can reach their full potential. Only For only then, when all Americans in all 50 states, in every community, great and small, help other neighbors, family, and friends, can we finally defeat the disease and scourge of poverty that has plagued humanity for thousands of years? So I call on all Americans, from New York to San Francisco, from Minneapolis to Houston, and all the points in between, your communities need you. Volunteers and donations are needed for an innumerable number of organizations tackling everything from school lunches to adult literacy to homeless shelters. Donating your time, money, or both is a great way to tell your community we will not leave you behind, we will help you, we will keep you warm and fed and safe. The applause as Bobby Kennedy finishes his speech is deafening. As he waves to the crowds showing off his famous smile, statistics already show that the poverty rate in America is decreasing with a boost of welfare, the support for medical services, and the improvement of labor rights. For the cherry on top, the National Progressive Party, which is famous for not agreeing on anything, somehow has come, come all together to support the president's work. All in all, job well done. We will leave the nation a better place than we found it. In which we could do economic opportunity, but let's do the rights of the worker. The right to life, the right to liberty, and the right to pursuit of happiness. Those are what our founding fathers called America's inalienable rights, for which the 
Lord God, I guarantee to every man and woman within its bounds is a matter of course. It is and should be America's government's duty to secure these rights for its own citizens, act as instruments of his will. Unfortunately, we have fallen short of the responsibilities our forefathers had once enshrined. Today, the American worker lives without the financial and personal securities which allow him to live freely and pursue what makes him happy. This is a problem that President Kennedy has pleasure to rectify, though figuring out the peculiarities of the situation will take some time. But unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time since is this is a uh, an election year. Ooh. 43 is center MPP. Hmm. Well. Quite the map, I'd say. Scout Helicopter Company 2 is very nice. It's almost June 1st. We can close this out and get some logistic companies because we can. Nice. Very good. And we still are trying to get a better carrier hull. Much better carrier hull. Speaking of carriers... Ship-wise, what are they doing? Not much. Oh, cool, I don't care who it is. Yeah, this is disappointing. What are you guys doing in Democratic Republic of Iran? I don't think they have really a focus tree after this, but we'll see what happens. Maybe they're just meant to live for now. Because I don't want to see them disunited. That's not cool. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, we could do stuff up the... Why is it still here? That sent... the. It says this Iranian civil war is still going on. We'll see what happens once they finish their focus tree, though. We'll see what happens. AR, the rights of the worker. And now we shall do... Implementing public pensions. I would like to do this. You can read about this if you like. Let's go with the federal minimum wage. For the longest time, American companies have abused the liberties that we've granted them to wean every last bit of soul out of their workers. To pay them in paltry pennies, barely enough to get by in even the most ramshackle sections of the cities. They offer no compensation for injuries at work, expecting them to perform as if they were healthy and pale, and worsening the wounds should they let, fail to meet expectations. It is a fact that America's greatest names inflict the greatest miseries onto America's meekest in pursuit of greater profit, yet few dare to speak out against it in the past. The Kennedy administration seeks to change this miserable state of affairs by guaranteeing every American worker an employee an hourly rate for their labor, safeguarding them against the worst excesses of modern capitalism. More will have to change their, for their miseries to be fully assuaged, assuaged but none can ask for a finer finer small step than a minimum wage for all working Americans. We'll focus on creating federal minimum wage, gain support from unions, and his radical support base. What do we have currently? Military, political, economic, medium taxation, low minimum... I guess technically we do have a low minimum wage, so... Advanced scout hill is cool. We get more stability this way, less less max factories in a state, huh? Monthly poverty rate does go up, though. That's pretty good. Or, I guess technically that means decreasing poverty, but whatever. Attack helicopters, Cobras, cool. Plan sessions with Humphrey. The president and the vice president have been talking for hours in the Oval Office. <clears throat> trying to plan the next step toward forward. However, the reality that divisive and fractious politics within the National Progressive Party, especially in the center faction, have been co complicating matters. While they almost universally support Robert Kennedy as president, there are two wings that have their own interests and policy goals, and while often allied on many issues, a few conflicting points are just that much harder to, to deal with. On one hand, you have the union guys, the labor leaders seeking to expand the power of the workers' unions in the face of the big corporations and hostile moneyed interests, protecting and increasing their rights for collective bargaining, safer working conditions, and work job security. On the other hand, are the social warfare proponents seeking to strengthen the safety net to catch those that fall through the cracks, tackling poverty and homelessness, and driving, giving every American the chance to make a decent living, usually through higher taxes on the rich. The problem is that it's god dang near impossible to push both agendas at the same time partially due to the opposition that would come from the rich and powerful fat cats that would rather keep their power over the workers and their vast fortunes away from those who need it. So that leaves the president with two options, either focus his political capital on trying to boost the pensions for the public and private sector that will help unionize, unionize workers, or try to increase the federal minimum wage to help those stuck on the bottom of society. But well, both are good issue, ideas. Only one will be able to get through Congress easily. So who are going to piss off this time? Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Oh god, this does not sound good for us, though. But at least the Middle East seems to calm down right now. And the Divine Mandate is still trying to kill these people. Wow. That is uh, kind of disgusting. How's the man doing? Oh, well, this is Zykov first, but how's he doing? Oof, that is not good. They're out of manpower. They have 45 divisions. These guys have 53. And th Oh, boy. The 72 National Progressive Primaries. Oh no, no, I don't want to get rid of RFK. 
The NF NPP is holding their convention in Miami Beach, Florida, in the midst of one of the greatest cultural changes in American history that is river baiting through the party that has long prided itself as representing the interests of those left behind by the Republican Democrats. But the issues are now moving away from debates about civil rights for African Americans, the extent of social welfare, how to best defeat Japan and reclaim the lost Pacific territories. Now issues over homosexuality, abortion, drugs, and others are claiming the attention of all sides of the NPP, but the party is facing another problem. The first MP pre NPP president ever elected, RFK, has declined to break the unofficial two-term limit. What? I will not be seeking a third term. No, no, you get back in here, Kennedy. The fractious party, having tenuously united under one leader for eight years, is now facing a leadership rescue to destroy the fragile MPP coalition. In the end, none of the candidates received enough delegates to win the primaries, leading to a brokered convention. The two leaders were Sen H Senator Henry Scoop Jackson of Washington State, leading the CNP... PP and advocating for social welfare programs, and Jean Kirkpatrick, congresswoman from Oklahoma, and one of the strong proponents and defenders of the neoconservative movement that is coalescing the FR NPP. However, it all comes down to the ballots of the delegates in the Miami Beach Convention Center. And after a long day and night in voting, the chairperson is taken to the stage to announce the results of the last ballot. We will scoop the White House. Jean Kirkpatrick, she can win, no trick. Uh, we've done so well with the center NPP, we're going to stick with it. Kennedy, Kennedy, you get your big butt back in here, and we're going to do more reforms and stuff. I don't, we're not getting rid of Kennedy. What the heck? Campaign for support. Increased popularity for the bill across America. Okay. Seems more liberal candidate. Mm. It is already 72, though, so we probably won't get assassinated, right? This administration is operating in full understanding that it will hold itself to the needs of the people. We do not function without a mandate from those who do, had and had not voted for us in November of 64. Any act we undertake must be... Must have the support of a good majority of Americans. Unfortunately, many still remain doubtful, even hostile to our platform for a wide assortment of reasons. A weak mandate inevitably leads to weak government, in turn leading to an underdoing of what has us so far accomplished. To prevent such a scenario, the White House strategists have planned a comprehensive information and awareness campaign in the coming months. This will involve everything we have at our disposal. Media outlets, loyal pundits and personalities, grassroots activists, even President Kennedy himself addressing the American people's concerns in person and on the airwaves. With this comes hope that more Americans join the NPP's ranks for providing the administration with their full support for its legislative agenda. Cool. What's not cool is the political power. So at this point, I'm no longer going to be cutting civilian spending. We're going to be actually increasing the budget as much as possible. Hmm. Polls are updated. I guess we could check it out. But they're not that reliable. Less RDs, please. Thank you. Oh, man. My greatest worry about getting someone else besides Kennedy here... Is that do we change like who the focus tree? I don't want to change the focus tree here. I really don't. I want to get through this as much as possible. The greatest generation. How do you get through all of this? I guess technically, to get all through this, you can't go down this path, which I think is kind of stupid. That you should be able to do this as well. At least get down here. I don't know. I just. Mm, we didn't have enough time. Of course, I didn't have to do any of this, but still. But the 72 Republican Democratic primaries. The primaries and caucuses are over, and now a thousand delegates from every state and territory of the Union are converging in Miami Beach Convention Center in the eponymous city of Florida. And this year, the fight has boiled down into two horse race between former Secretary of Defense and Ford Motor Company Executive Robert McNamara and South Dakota Senator George McGovern. McNamara, whose only government position was Secretary of Defense, but seeks to bring business efficiency to governing, represents a more mainstream opinion of the RD Party as a moderate Democrat, while McGovern is a staunchly liberal Republican whose unofficial slogan of Asset, Amnesty, Abortion has become div divisive across the nation, is posing a major question for the delegates of the convention. McGovern claims that he can take on some of the votes of the MPP center wing, forging a new coalition that ex can expand America's progressive future. While McNamara supporters are claiming that McGovern would destroy the RD party and hand another victory to the National Progressive Party. However, questions between both opinions abound. Is McGovern too far left-wing to hold the RD together? Is McNamara's business experience a boon or a hindrance? Many Republican Democrats are expressing in dismay that these are the only viable options they have this time, and raising concerns about lack of support and fracturing of the un party unity. But the results of the final ballot are being announced, and the winner is President for Prosperity, George McGovern, the soon be head, Mc, head of the McGovernment. Wow, seriously, was that an actual slogan? Jesus. I'm going to go with McGovern just because he sounds crazy. And hopefully, the center wins, the NPP center, please. I mean, I'm pretty sure we're going to lose support from the center NPP, but whatever it happens. Come on, let me just spend. Spend. How many more days do we have left with this? Civilian austerity. Okay, so we have until 20. Oh, a little less than a month. That's not bad then. It's not bad. Oh, God. 39. Campaign for support. Well, I guess the next one we're probably going to do. We could do the economic opportunity, but I don't want to have fail this ever. Because we might not have enough support for it. So I'm just saying that for now. Propose a Social Security Act. 
This taking this focus will prevent you from taking non-Social Security Act focuses until the Social Security has been sent through Congress. Oh boy. And next up we're going to choose military police because we can. So let's read about the next focus. Sit with Chavez. Do we have to do that? Yes we do. Reprimand the police. This will greatly anger the more hawkish members of the NPP. Ooh. Ooh. We're going to sit with Chavez. Nowadays one cannot speak for the American labor movement without mentioning Cesar Chavez. The Californian labor leader is renowned and skyrocketed since the national strikes of the past, having won the hearts of millions with a steadfast defense of their rights and do just dues. Poor farmers in both his home state and across the country utter his name in the same breath as the Lord God, thanking him for the protection of the U.S. Farm United farm workers bestowed upon them and tens of thousands of others. The administration cannot negotiate in good faith with American labor without approaching the representatives it acknowledges. For much of it, Senor Chavez is nothing less than a blessed idol. An earnest chat with the proverbial shepherd of America's farmers will assure them that what we are doing, we are committed to uplifting them with their demeaning, humiliating stature and treating them as the fundamental pillars of society that they are. Have a seat, Mr. Chavez. The Dick's Crest will trust us less if we go through with this. Oh, we're shattering any sort of support we have with each other. This is not good. Cool. And I guess we're sitting down with Chavez then. Well, yeah, since we're here, Maz continues slashing death, right? Oh man, this is not good. <laughs> Road towards justice. Man, we are crippled. My goodness. And Russia is still a mess. My goodness. We have elections coming up. Oof. Mm. Honestly, I don't know. These guys have to be done with their focus treated by now, right? No, they're not. Depending on secrets. Okay, there we go. Sit with Chavez. See what happens. At this point, 1.32. Not bad. Slash that. Increase it. We get $24 billion in debt. That's fine. So be it right now. 1.38. Yeah, I don't necessarily have to do the focus, but it's probably best if I do. Reprimand the police. Greatly anger the more hawkish members of the NPP. Polls are updated. Uh, let's see how the polls are doing first. Upcoming race. Uh, it's looking pretty R... Lack of RD. That's good. This looks pretty NPP, but you can't trust the polls, you know. Reprimand the police, the National Labor Relations Act. Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't know. Mm. The Economic Opportunity Act. We could try this first, because then we can do the reprimand the police next. Yeah. With Congress convinced and the American people appeased, there's no better time to hold the culmination of our work, money, and time to a vote. The Economic Opportunity Bill is one of several proposals comprising what history will consider the most comprehensive piece of economic reform introduced to Capitol Hill since the New Deal era. From large school grants to nationwide vocational training programs, federal food charities to cheap houses, it is a pamphlet of measures both guaranteed and experimental with intent of tackling and hopefully reducing the specter of American poverty. The war on poverty may not even end in our generation, or our children's gen generation, or their children's, but we will sound its death knell with its bells and shrine, and announce to the world that its days are numbered. In a hundred years or a thousand, the American people will celebrate a mission accomplished, take pride for having laid the foundations of their triumph. Awesome. Cool. And actually, if I remember correctly, I might have tried that, play this off screen and didn't go so well, but we'll see what happens. We get at least one more event here. Oh, oh, the economic opportunity bill. Oh boy, that is not looking good. Oh, Senate elections, hello. Economic opportunity act, wait, hold on. Oh, that's already in, oh. Oh, this is not good, look at that. 34, three, five, two. So basically we have 44 support. That's all we have. There's little to no room for compromise. 44. If we could get all 11, that would be good. But uh, I really, really don't want to influence the campaign with console commands, but I've already done it once with my Glenn playthrough, so I might do it just so we can push it through and do well with it, just because I think I want to get as much done as possible before we lose RFK. And I don't know if this is going to keep the same tree. Hopefully it does, because I want to see... Good night, sweet prince. But, oh my goodness. But, regardless, that's where we're going to end today's episode. If you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we see if we can pass the bell using console commands, maybe, or not. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.